And so I'm so grateful to my good friend Mark McDonald for leading us through this journey, getting us to this point. But really, this is like our commencement. <laughs> if we were like that, it feels like a graduation. This is the commencement of the next, the next part of your life, which is the thrive phase. And so, Mark, I want to hand over to you for some last tips before all of our good friends here in the Core Challenge community take part in their the the next journey of their life, Thank the thrive phase. So, Mark, Jones. I'll hand over Man, to you. I love that. I love that analogy about when you go buy a hammer. You don't, you're not actually buying, you, you're doing it to nail a, a, a to, to put a nail into the wall. I mean, I love that idea and I love the picture you showed. I love what you talk about Lucy and the kids. And everyone, that's where, you know, tonight, that's what this is about. It's not just about making you, your, your eight week run finishing in style and finishing strong, but it's about setting you up to win the rest of your life and thrive. And thriving is flourishing and being your very best. But before we dive into any of that, I do want to do a moment of silence because my dear friend and colleague, Mr. Stevie Jones, is English, and England is out of the World Cup, <laughs> as is Italy. Now, USA came close. I know Steve's going to be saying something soon, but USA came close to making it into the second round, and we are going to when we play Germany on the 26th. But for right now... Let's all have a moment of silence for England because Stevie Jones, the U.S., the Americans are getting stronger than the English. I love it. Okay, as everyone has a smile on their face, as I talked about the World Cup, there's three ways that we talk about finishing strong. And I want you to really think about where you were eight weeks ago. You know, as you're starting your eighth week and you're preparing to make this, this core challenge and take it on and, and make this run. What were your dreams of your body? Where did you want to go? You know, I have a nine-year-old son, and he loves the game of soccer. He loves it. You know, I played. I was a goalkeeper. He's a goalkeeper. He has a World Cup ball and his, his USA jersey, and, and, his, and he collects all the stickers, and he watches every game, all, every, 12, 3, 6, every single day. And he loves that. And his dream is to become a professional soccer player. He wants to represent the USA as a goalkeeper, just like Tim Howard does. And that's what reminded me, watching Hunter since the World Cup started, it, it, I'm a dreamer, but it ignited me even more. And it made me think of the thousands and thousands of people that I've worked with wanting to take their body and health to the next level, just like you. So I want you to think about what are those dreams? When you had eight weeks ago, what was your goal? As Stevie mentioned, maybe you wanted to lose weight, burn fat, build muscle. But what was that dream you had for the body? Because what we know, is that what you get from your health is everything. See, many people can start strong. Everyone can start strong. It's exciting. The momentum's there. It's easy. Anyone can do anything for a day or two. But slowly and steadily, as we've seen throughout this eight-week challenge, and you'll see everywhere in life, the people who start strong will be there, but there won't be a ton of people who will finish strong. Now, each of you have made a commitment to yourself to not just start strong, to not just handle the challenges that happened to you throughout these past eight weeks and that will continue to happen throughout your life, but you've made a choice to finish strong. So I'm going to ask you tonight to get back to that moment you felt when you started on day one, that excitement, that fun. And I want you to rate yourself right now, one through ten. Where were you there? Write it down. Were you a ten out of ten of excitement? Were you a 1 out of 10? Then I want you to rate yourself right now, starting week 8, where are you? Most of you might have been, you're, you're, you're there, you're excited to finish, but do you have the same level of excitement that you had when you started? I'm going to invite you two to get back to that place. For this next week, I want you to finish as strong or stronger than when you started. And there's three things that you're going to implement right now that's going to provide you the ability to have the best after pictures and results that you could possibly have. There's something powerful about knowing internally that you did something for eight weeks. That knowing that you started something, you finished something, and you have a visual proof to it. So throughout this next week, this next week, whatever happens, I want you to remember that. That the three ways you finish strong, that you cross that finish line, as that visual shows right there, is number one, you got to eat clean. In the Ignite phase, you added some complex carbohydrates, and even if they're high quality, like quinoa and brown rice and sweet potatoes, the reality 
is simple carbs like your fruits and your veggies cause less inflammation, less bloating. Well, let's maximize your photos here. I want you to go back to the detox meal guidelines. Still take your burn capsule, still do your probiotic. You don't have to do the, detox, the cleanse boost, but you eat clean. You follow those same food recommendations. That's going to prevent, prevent you from holding water and get you as lean and tight as possible. Then, the second thing is you're going to add at least 10 minutes to every cardio session. If you're doing one, one 30-minute session of high-intensity cardio per week, I want you to add two. If you're doing 30 minutes, I want you to do 35 to 40 minutes. If you're doing 30 minutes of fat burning cardio, I want you to do 60 minutes or 40 minutes. Kelly Bonamo, who dropped 30 pounds in the eight weeks, what she did that last week is she said, I finished stronger than when I started. And she pushed her cardio. She was doing 60 minutes. She raised it to 90 minutes. She was doing 30 minutes of high intensity. She raised it to 40 minutes. She was doing strength training, but she found an extra gear to do one more rep one more push-up, one more pull-up to drive herself to be her very best. Now, it's not something you do for the rest of your life, but we talked about this when we started this journey together. Life's about making runs. So these next, this next seven days, make your run stronger than ever before and push your exercise. And the last thing is you want to use a steam room or sauna. Now, back in 2001, where Abby and I were on our honeymoon in Jamaica, I learned this trick. It's called the Japanese water excretion method. And the way your body works is you have everyone grab your skin, like your forearm, and you have water in between your muscle and your skin. And that's fluid. And when you want to do a photo, you want to get, as, you get rid of that as much as possible, which is why I have a sauna right in my house. So before a photo shoot, I can drop my water. Now, how do you do that? Well, you're going to use a steam or sauna. A steam or sauna. So simply, you do a warm shower, which opens up your pores for one minute. You then go into a steam room or a sauna. You sweat it out as long as you can, five to ten minutes. Then you go right into a, a ice cold shower or a plunge pool, which closes your pores. And then you repeat the process, going back in the steam or sauna, and then back into the cold. You do that two to three to four times. And what that does is every single time you go from hot to cold, it causes your body to release more fluid. Now you keep drinking positive water throughout that process, but you're losing all of this excess bloat. It makes you tighter and crisper for your photos. So three ways to finish strong. You eat clean, you push your exercise, and you drop your water. Okay, that's going to give you your best photos. And throughout this week, what you're going to see, you're going to see posts from many of the health pros out there that will help you and guide you on how to maximize your photos so you get the best before and afters possible. Now, let's thrive it up. So you have your dream of where you want to be. You're going to get the photos. You know how to finish strong. Well, tonight's going to be a taste of your thrive. I know you're not there yet, but next week you start your thrive. And it's important to know what's happening. So there's three things we're looking at. Your detox is about cutting, cleaning, and flushing. Your ignite was about burning and sculpting. And then your thrive is about reprogramming, diversifying, and energizing. Now, we talk about reprogramming. It's about turning this into a way of life. So when we talk about reprogram, you know, it's important to also understand that the basic principles, you're going to do the same as you did with the detox at Ignite. All we're doing is you're adding some more diversity, we're adding some more food, varying your exercise a bit to make this really work into your world. And that's what reprogramming is. It keeps your metabolism going. Now, what happens, and I want you to ask yourself this. Think of the last time you made a run for something. You pushed really, really hard. You had a run, and then you needed a recovery. But when you had that recovery, did you push too hard so you lost a little bit of focus? Possibly. That's what we got to prevent here. The progress you make, these amazing before and afters, as you look at a wall right now and you see your before picture, and then you imagine what your after picture is going to be, if you lose focus on that, what's going to happen is everything you lost, you're going to regain. So reprogramming and this journey for these past eight weeks has not been about suck it up for eight weeks and then go back to what you were doing. Every single week, you made minor adjustments that allowed you to make it a way of life. So you have to stay focused throughout this. Number two, 
to make your results new and that new weight permanent, you must keep your body moving forward. So in life, and what I've seen, for years I thought maintenance you could maintain. And what I've learned is you either are moving forward or you're moving backwards. The moment you think you're good, slowly and steadily you're going to start regressing. Think of most people you know that end up retiring. Because retiring makes people feel like they just sit on a chair and relax. Eventually, they just start to regress in all parts of their life because they're not stimulated. So we, you don't, you're not going to you're not going to push as hard as you've done because you've been in an all-in mode. But we want to stay in a progression mode. We want to stay in a mode that you're you're challenging yourself. You're you're creating new ways to exercise, bringing in new foods. You're still moving forward. You're not just content. I worked with so many people. If you read Body Confidence, you'll see people once they achieve their goal. They then want to take their body to another level. What didn't seem possible eight weeks ago is now possible. And now it's important that you keep moving forward. And then the last thing is you've got to maintain a five-pound range. I had a friend, Charlie, and he would lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight. And he would always be lean, and then he'd go to vacation, and he'd gain it all back, and he'd go yo, 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 yo. And he understood what to do, and he had the support to do it. But the one thing he didn't understand was the power of a five-pound range. See, this is the key. I want you to think about the weight that you want to be. You know, my five-pound range is mine's about 200. I like to be around 200 to 205. So, so when I'm at my 200 level, if I have a big photo shoot, I'll strip down, I'll drop my water, get down to 192. That won't be real weight, but I'll get really lean and tight. And then as my water comes up, I'll be around 200. That's the number I like to be. Now, if I go on vacation and I have a little more extra off-plan meals as you're going to start work living with your Thrive Flip phase, I might put on a couple pounds. And if I come back and I'm wearing about 205, 206 and I feel a little more bloated, then I know that I got to dial it back in to get back to that weight that I'm comfortable at, that 200. So that's what, that's what I mean by a five-pound range. You have to know when you have to push a little bit harder, reel it back in, just like if you're throwing out a fishing line, reel it back in. So you're not overextended because once you get to that, if I got to 210 or 215 or 220, well, now it seems like a, a longer adventure back to that number. But if you keep it within a five-pound range, you're set up to win. And you're never worrying about going back to where you were. You're only moving forward. That's what reprogramming is. To reprogram your body and make the weight that you are now permanent, you have to be there for at least two months. So if you get there now and then you lose it, it's gone. But internally, in your brain, you have something called a weight regulating mechanism. And you have an internal set point. And your body will recalibrate itself to hold that. If you can stay focused, keep your body moving forward, and maintain a five-pound range, it will become permanent for you. Okay, so once we reprogram, now we've got to diversify. I shared this when we started. When we started this journey together, I said, listen, you're not going to have to give up alcohol forever or bread forever or an off-plan meal. And many of you, the first week or two weeks, you said, man, this is hard. But what you started to see was week three, week four, week five, you didn't crave the food as much anymore. You were okay. Like You were feeling like, okay, this is a system. This is a rhythm. The one thing I want to share with you is this. Once you add an off-plan meal back in, you'll still crave food. You'll crave food the next day. That's why it's important that you understand, is the juice worth the squeeze? What's my cost? What's my payoffs? But it's also important that we prevent boredom. Because the number one reason people fall off their plan and begin a backslide is because they get bored. So do you need to do a weekly off-plan meal? You don't. And I don't like the word cheat. And that's why when we would cheat there, I don't like the word cheat. Because cheat means like you're doing something wrong. So take out that word cheat and put off-plan. Because all that means is you're going off plan for a moment and then you're going back on plan. It's that simple. Now, if you feel like you're not at your goal yet, if you feel you got some more juice in the tank, you could do an off plan meal. I love that. Stevie Jones just put an X through it. I love that, Stevie. You can do, you can do an off plan meal every two weeks, every month. You know, we're going to um, Disney World tomorrow. And we're going 12 days at Animal Kingdom Lodge. So because of that, I didn't do an um, off-plan meal for a few weeks because I want to be super lean and tight because in Disney World, I'm going to do some extra off-plan meals. 
Well, that's when we talk about add a weekly off-plan meal or every two weeks or monthly. But you want to add that in, and this is what you do. You eat consistently up to that. You have whatever you want. Make it an adventure. If you want pizza and ice cream, go for it. I love to go to Outback Steakhouse and get a blooming onion and bread and salad and a cheeseburger um, and then a, and finish it off with a thunder from down under. So if you want to go for it, go for it. Just get right back on after. It's not if you fall off. It's not that you never have an off plan. It's what you do after that meal will determine your success. Add more of your favorite fruits. If you love some Greek yogurt, bring it in. If you love bread, preferably gluten-free. If you want some gluten, go for it. Just understand that yogurt, gluten-free bread, or even uh, bre non-gluten-free bread, that's going to bloat you a little bit. If you bring alcohol back in, go for it. Just take out your starchy carbs. Just understand that the more you bring back in, the less progress you're going to make. So you got to find that balance. So we have to find the balance where you don't feel like you're just you're you're in such a place where you're going to quit, but you're in a good place where you feel like you have enough freedom, enough flexibility to live this for the rest of your life and it's diverse enough. And the third thing is you have to add additional workouts. I put a post on Facebook this past week, and I showed my indoor bike, my my road bike on the indoor trainer in front of uh, my TV that's connected to Apple TV, so I can stream my favorite movies, TV shows. I also um, posted a picture of my magnetic weights um, with um, Bowflex that I have, TechSport, which is just amazing weights, and it, they're in that space. I talk about how I do indoor trampoline dodgeball, how I'll take my dogs for a walk with a weighted vest, how I'll hit the tennis courts, how I'll play racquetball, all of these things. I'll play soccer, which I'm playing to tonight again. I'm going to play, play in a soccer match late tonight, 11 p.m. But my point I'm making is you've got to keep things fun. You've got to mix it up. And then you need to know when you have time, you can do this. When you're a little tight for time, you can do this. And when you have no time, when I don't have time to do any of that stuff, I jump on my bike, I watch some TV, and I cycle away. I spin away. So you have to find new things that make you feel that you're working out and you're not in this rut. My buddy Michael Anos, who hosts HLN Now, and we do our weekly series together. Mike falls into becoming a creature of habit. And he said, Mark, I'm tired of the elliptical trainer. I'm tired of the treadmill. So, Mike, you got to mix it up. So he started doing some cardio tennis. He found new ways so he gets stimulated again. Diversity is about staying stimulated to optimize and maximize your results. So right now, before we move on to the third one, Energize, I want you to imagine what that weekly off-plan meal is going to be. Think about it. Right now, write it down. Write down what food you're going to have. Then, what are some foods you want to work into your plan? And what are some workouts that you've been wanting to try? Maybe you want to rock climb. What are some things that you want to do that's going to give you a little more variety? Everyone got it down? Okay, think about that tonight. Really start, as you own and you finish strong, also spend some dream time on how your plan's going to evolve because that's how you make it a way of life. Energize. So once you're reprogrammed, once you're diverse, Energize to me is what this is all about. You know, I've been teaching health since 1995, and I've been living it, my, my, I feel, since I was seven years old. What I've realized is that if you don't do it together, then you can never really do it permanently. I've shared before that I grew up watching my mom eat her diet foods with my sister Lori, and then my dad, my sister Chris, and myself would eat our normal food. It's crazy to me that when we look at how do we make this a way of life, how do we solve adult obesity and childhood obesity, because it it's only going up, is that we have to tell people how to do it realistically. So eating meals together is not all sitting down at the dinner table. If you can do that, that's fantastic because that's great bonding time. But me, Abby, and Hunter, you know, we're busy, so we don't have time to eat at the t table all the time. But what we can do is that if Abby makes one dish, it works for me, Abby, and Hunter. If I make a dinner, it works for me, Abby, and Hunter. We work as a team. We eat the same foods. We focus on living it together. That's the power of it. It's not Abby making one dish for Hunter, one dish for herself, and one dish for me. It's unrealistic. You can't maintain that pace. So you've got to eat your food together. You've got to exercise together. You know, last night or two nights ago, went to dodgeball, indoor trampoline dodgeball, Sky Zone with Hunter. 
I can't tell you how happy it makes me that I get to spend three hours playing a game with my son. Knock it out. Like bonding time and exercising with him. Me, Abby, and Hunter have bikes. We go for bike rides together. We walk the dogs together. You know, whether you're a parent or a non-parent, it doesn't matter. The point is, whether it's your friends or your family, you have to find a way to exercise together, not separate. Now, if you're single and there's no one to exercise with, then do it by yourself. That's easy. But when you start bringing more people into your life, if you don't do it together, you become separate. And then the last thing is you live your health together. See, as a transformation starts with you, I talked to my dear friend Michelle Todden and Scott Todden, and we featured them on Headline News, and I showed them a few weeks ago. And Michelle's a breastfeeding mom who dropped 28 pounds, 23 inches. Scott's the, the dad who lost his baby weight too, 31 pounds, 17 inches. And what Michelle told me about was by them living it, it connected them together. It then transferred to their two children, and they have their third as a baby, but she's just doing what Michelle's doing with the little baby. But the two other kids started doing it, exercising together. But what transpired was this. Michelle's mommy club, Michelle's friends, all joined in. And now she's leading 26 people as a community to do the plan with her. That's how it spreads. See, my mission is clear and simple. I want to stop people from feeling like they can't make their health happen. I want everyone to understand how your health can be cool, simple, and fun. And you need the right tools to do it. And you need the right education to do it and the right information. And that's what this challenge is all about. That's what this plan is all about. So as you energize, make sure you're eating together. Make sure you're exercising together. And make sure you're living together. That just doesn't end with you. It just doesn't end with your family. It expands throughout your community so you can make the impact and help educate people on how it is possible. So that's what this is about. This week for you is very simple. You're going to finish strong and you do that by eating clean, pushing yourself with your exercise, hitting a steam room or sauna. And then you're going to start preparing for the thrive phase. You're understanding, you're clear on how to reprogram, diversifying, you're already dreaming about things that you can do that can bring back in to still make sure that you stay within that five pound range. And then you energize. You lead by example. And then it spreads throughout your family and your community. Now, I love this slide here when we talk about can you believe that the eight weeks is almost done? You've done it. And as you have that before picture and that after picture, you're going to see the transformation. So when we look at this, here are some logistical stuff I want everyone to know. And Abby Atkinson has been fantastic throughout this whole challenge. She'll be posting on Facebook all week long, giving you this additional information. And the Thrive Phase document for all the complete details will be available on corn8.com. But right here, you're going to send everything to corechallenge at movement.com. We need two good quality pictures. One shot from the front, one shot from the side, showing your results. You know, take a few, make sure the lighting's good. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a, a clear background so it's not a bunch of clutter in the background. Wear something similar to your before picture, bathing suit or form fitting, so that we can actually see the difference. And then you need to include this information, your first name, last name, your height, and your current weight. Then your measurements. Make sure that you're doing your biceps, your belly, your hips, your butt, your thighs. And once again, this is all going to be on the, the um, Core Challenge Community Facebook group. And then your story. Remember, this transformation is not just about how much weight did someone lose. That's not what this is about at all. We each have it. You know, my wife, Abby, she made a post on Facebook that she, she broke the 125-pound mark. Now, when I met Abby, she was about 105 pounds. She's five foot one, active athlete. And many of you know that she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia about 15 years ago because someone, someone tripped over a rug, fell into her neck, and there's a massive health challenges that occurred from that point. And over the past three years, she suffered a few miscarriages. She's had some major hormone challenges, and she struggled with weight. And it's been tough for her. And, and, you know, when someone looks at Abby, they don't think she struggles with weight, but she wasn't comfortable in her own skin. And she still looks great. She's still beautiful. All of that. But for herself, she didn't feel comfortable. But it's taken her months 
to get down to 125. To go from 130 to drop eight pounds and build one pound of muscle has taken her months. So I just want everyone to understand. Everyone has a different story. Everyone's transformation is special. And I don't care if you lost one pound or 40 pounds or we had a lady in North Dakota drop 75 pounds in eight weeks. We want you to do that. Give us a written email and, I know it says or there, but let's do and a video submission. If you don't want to do a video, then at least an email. But if you do a video, give us a written content too. Tell us the journey you've walked, not just through your eight week, but what has been before that. There's always a story before the story. And all of this must be submitted by 4th of July. What a great holiday. To be considered for one of the champion incentives. And that's the key when we talk about all of the different prizes and packages. So we need everything from the fourth. But it's beyond that. Whether you get chosen as one of the winners of the top transformations, please know your story is going to be featured. People are going to hear it. People are going to be inspired. Because everything you do, by you leading by example, by you making a commitment to eight weeks, you're showing people how to be their very best. You know, I want to end this webinar with this before I bring Steve back on. Steve opened up talking about how inspired he was with each of you. I want you to know that words can't express the effort that each of you have done. You know, people are looking for hope. Many people have lost hope in their, in their body and in their confidence. And I remember a few months ago, I met the Weber family. And Shannon Weber has a husband and five kids, and, and four of the kids were struggling with weight, as of Shannon and Scott were. And Shannon didn't have belief that she was worthy enough to drop weight. She lost all her self-esteem. She lost all her self-confidence. But because she knew her kids needed to drop weight, and because she understood that the comfort food that she was eating wasn't really providing anyone much comfort anymore, she decided to take action. And eight weeks later, the family dropped over 150 pounds. And their story will be one of the many forwards that will, be, that will be in my upcoming book coming out in spring. But what I love about that is the power of that. And I heard Shannon just post something about if you're overweight, how to take a picture. And she said for years, she avoided the camera. And that might be many of you on the webinar. I know my, my dear friend Jody Stevens didn't want to take pictures. Many people, when they're not confident in their body, they don't want to take pictures. And what she said in her post is that she now loves to take pictures. Each of us have our own goals. As you listen tonight, as you finish strong, please know that I'm here with you every step of the way. Stevie Jones is here with you every step of the way. And most important, the entire core community is here with you every step of the way. Get more active in the Facebook group. Be more active with everything. This is just the beginning. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Stevie Jones. Back to you, my friend. Thank you very much, Mark. And I, I totally agree and support everything you just said there. And uh, it's so wonderful to, to have you on this journey with us. And thank you so much for all that you've done.